guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Fossil Friday. So in today's video I've decided to start tackling my fossil table. Now this table I've been neglecting for a while and underneath the table is just piles and piles of boxes and crates of different things I've found on different digs just expecting for myself to get on top of it at some point and even though I've only been collecting for you know only a few years in the grand scheme of things but it's getting out of hand now and I want to go back in time and just process things properly so I'm kind of taking one crate at a time from underneath my desk here and we're gonna actually see what's in it so we're starting with this one down here so they're just like these I, they're just these little crates actually I used to use like mushroom crates but eventually they die over time so this is the crate we're dealing with so there's a few juicy lo looking things in there the first one being this one now no joke when I first took this crate out I thought potentially I left my lunch in it from like two years ago and I was a little bit nervous to actually peek inside this bag it doesn't look very promising but it's actually absolutely fine so this is from um, this is quite a different fossil hunting trip I did I was actually hunting upper carboniferous plant fossils now I don't really hunt plants that often I normally I'm like stuck in the Cretaceous Jurassic that's my like sort of rocks that I love to go digging through but this stuff it's pretty cool it's around 300 million years old so like a long long time ago and what's cool about plants is a lot of the ones you find as fossils are still around today, especially ferns. So they're some of the oldest plants and they're super cool to find as fossils because they're identical literally as what you find in the forest at the moment. So there's quite a few cool ones in here. So I'll, I'll take them out properly to show you, but I can show you some of them like this. So ugh, all the names of them have kind of left my head, but these I think are calamites or something like that. They're like they look like little star bursts to me like they you can kind of see there so they've got like almost got petals they they look like some of the first like flowering plants or to me they do anyway but they I, they might be leaves on them i'll have to like do a bit of research after finding these and uh yeah scratch up on my plant knowledge and let's see what else we've got in here oh we've got some more of them here so some of these are awesome so I did find these in the south of England, so you get like old coal mines and obviously when they're mining for coal that's how you can get some really lovely preservation of plant fossils because usually with fossils, you know, organic material, it rots away or is eaten so you need those like special conditions and the formation of coal forms in a similar way to plant fossils which is quite cool. So in the spill heaps of, you know, the coal miners we find all these awesome fossils of which you can also find like amazingly preserved like dragonflies and insects Obviously I didn't find any of those, if I did they'd probably be in a museum, but um, it's the same sort of stuff where you find like the massive two foot um, dragonfly that you may or may not have heard about, so that's pretty cool. Then what do I have in this little packet here? Dun dun dun. Oh we've got it, it's a long piece down the side there, you can see that really really straight rigid line there. Now I'm just trying to think. I can't for the life of me remember the name of that, but if I do throughout this video, I will let you know what is in here. God, it's like Christmas. Oh, we've got a, ah, oh, we've got some fern. Look at that, wait. Make sure it's in focus for you guys. You can see the fern leaves and the detail on these specimens is incredible. You can literally make out all the individual little leaves there and they look so similar to what you would find today. It's just like a little, it, to think these are 300 million years old and it's just like a trapped pocket of time, yet we can, it resembles what we see, you know, on the earth now. I just think it's fascinating that, you know, they, they didn't go extinct, they haven't really changed much, they're just quite happy for that amount of time. Like, I can't even fathom 300 million years, like, that is so much time. Right, this is the last one I'm going to show you from the plants, I'll then, um, get them out on board. Oh, look at this! Wow, that's like a complete leaf. How did I like forget about these? Look at this piece here. I really hope you can see the detail of this leaf because it is incredible. Wow, that is quite a stunning specimen. So I think with these, they, they, they seem pretty hardy fossils, so I need to, I've never actually prepped plant fossils before, so I'm going to read up a little bit about them and just before I cover them in my usual paraloid or anything like that, I'll check that that's the best thing for them. So I've got quite a few of those, so we'll open the rest of them in a minute, but I just want to kind of find out what else is in this bucket. So then we 
<laughs> we have some crushed fossils. Now this is a real shame because these are the types of fossils that you're meant to prep within two weeks of finding them because they kind of dry out and they're in like this like muddy kind of matrix. So this is what it looks like. So it's not awful this one. I should be able to salvage it, but now what's gonna be really, really hard is to flake off this excess matrix here without damaging the fossil. So at least with this one, quite a lot of the ammonite is exposed. So I can kind of just, you know, preserve what is already out on the open without needing to do too much more work. This one on the other hand is, mm, it's got beautiful colors in the shell. I mean, look, at the colors down here they are they're kind of reflecting rainbow almost but we're missing quite a bit of the ammonite now and all of this is on top the, the matrix is on top of that shell and it is so dried out now i will try i, I wonder if there's a way to like re-moist moisten it without like damaging it i'm gonna have to like play around with this specimen and see if i can like just kind of warm up the matrix a bit so i can actually flake it off without damaging the fossil but these sorts of fossils, if you ever find like crushed ones with like shells intact, prep them straight away. Don't do what I've done. Like I prepped most of them straight away and um, I posted videos on prepping them, but I obviously just forgot about a few specimens that I probably left somewhere else and was like, oh, Emma will remember. She didn't. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will try and salvage those, but unfortunately that wasn't my smartest move. Now, the rest of this bucket is quite exciting because a few weeks ago I posted me prepping some Nautiluses and I was like, ah, oh, I don't think I found many Nautilus. This must be like most of the specimens I found, beautifully prepped. They're now like in my, um, in my glass cabinet, like on display. And I was like, oh, I'll have to go hunting for some more Nautiluses. I don't. This is an entire bucket of Nautilus. Like we have some mahusive ones. So let me show you this one. They're not complete, but they are still pretty darn impressive. Is it gonna focus? Look at that. Look at the seg the chambers on that. Like that is incredible. I don't know if the center's there, but that is that is a healthy chunk of a Nautilus. So that is absolutely fine. Um, then we've got some really cool distorted ones that look, this one's obviously been like crushed. Um, let me see if it'll focus for you guys. Da -da -da. I'm gonna put the bucket down because I think this isn't very practical for me to show you whilst holding it then I can make sure you can actually see what I'm looking at. So look at, these are like deformed ones where all the chambers have kind of been crushed in. So before these chambers could be fully um, filled by sediment, the pressure obviously got too much. Look at the chaos going on in this one. How awesome is that? That is pretty cool to see. Then this one is quite nice. So we've got one half of it. And it's like split perfectly in half, but it's actually got crystallized like internal chambers. It's obviously been quite weathered. So I think um, I'm gonna give this one like a really good scrub and see if I can get that back to its former glory. But I love that you've got like one side, it's almost been like sliced in half for me, which is pretty cool. I think a tractor did this, um, if I'm honest. I think that one was found in a field um, somewhere in England. Then what else do I have in here? Uh, we've got another deformed one this is so cool seeing how the chambers have been like displaced and crushed I love going through like things I found in the past because I kind of when you hunt fossils I, I'm sure a lot of you can relate you kind of forget about like certain trips that you did or certain finds because you just kind of cling to those like really like key moments and key discoveries but um, a lot of the smaller stuff is still really awesome and so I really hope that you know over the next few months I can fully process what is in my um, fossil table and below it and we can actually get like on top of it because I'd love to be like up to date and be like everything I found I have prepped and then when I actually go hunting again like they're all fresh discoveries and I actually prep them in real time but it is hard with a life to keep on top of it because fossils take ages to prep so it's um, quite a tricky thing to like the dream is to obviously prep as I go but sometimes work takes control my studies take control so I have to just accept that there's always going to be a backlog. But here are some more specimens which are pretty awesome. Look at this one, it's like got a almost like a segment missing from its shell. But it's pretty complete this one. I think this like cleaned up with a little bit of paraloid to just help bring out um, the colours in the shell. It's going to be gorgeous. Same with this one. If I can prep the centre out of that one, it's in a lovely like piece of rock. Look at that. Then I also have 
these are just like some fragments of Nautilus, but they're pretty cool to look at because you can like almost see literally how the segments are. It's like a really nice, just kind of a to uh, <laughs> the anatomy of a Nautilus lesson. This is what it feels like. And again, I've just got some more chunks of Nautilus here where they're not complete, but they, it's almost like a fragment of an ammonite. We've just got like a few of the chambers. So they're just, they're pretty cool to look at like that. I wonder. They, they almost look like they should go together, but they definitely don't. No, that would be uh, too much of a dream if I had two jigsaw pieces. Then we've got a nice little one that, this one I think with a bit of prep and some paraloid will have some gorgeous colours in it. Look at like the oranges and yellows up there. So I should be able to prep out the centre and it might become just a really nice little, little specimen. And then we have... I think you saw that one. Yeah, we've got another one that needs to be prepped out the rock, but you can see the chambers are there. And then the center should be in there somewhere. So it just looks like that. And then this one, again, it's not complete, but that's the center. So I'm hoping prepped, this piece might be quite cool. And the other side of it is also pretty awesome. I love how the chambers look. They're really kind of etched out. Awesome. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the bucket I'm dealing with currently. So I'm going to kind of lay some of it out for you so you can actually like get a better glimpse. But um, yeah, I thought I need to start processing this stuff. And the first step of processing is actually working out what I've got. So I'm now going to like put some labels in this box and like work through what needs to be prepped. And then that's going to be like my next goal over like any free time I have over the next few days or weeks. And um, yeah, eventually... We'll get through all those buckets. I'll show you now just how many buckets I have. So this is the table. It is getting a little bit chaotic, as you can see. We've got, like, specimens everywhere. We've got some minerals. Um, this is obviously the big mega lithosaurus that I finished most of the prep on um, earlier this year. And then this is my lithosaurus that I'm working on currently. So it's been glued back together, and then it needs a little bit of um, prep just to help bring out... Um, some of the ribs just because they're a little bit hidden by matrix and then a coat of paraloid and then that one's done and then I mean this one's pretty awesome I can't remember what species it is but there's an ammonite literally inside this rock let me just get it to focus for you guys so you can see like that's um, the opening chamber there and then that's some of the outer outer whirl and then all under this is going to be an amazing specimen i just have no idea yet how i'm going to prep it i'm hoping with my dremel i can do it but i might need air tools for that one and we've got a few pieces at the back there that are already prepped um and then this is a lovely lithosaurus piece that is fully submerged in matrix so that's going to be quite a tough one to prep but will be beautiful when it's done here we have a little little lithosaurus and then we've got some more ammonites so I actually, I need to go through this and um, kind of ones that I've already prepped need to go into their forever homes in my cabinets or on my shelves. So this is the stuff I'm current, kind of working on currently, but then under the table is the problem. So if we come down, the bucket I'm going through at the moment is um, from that space at the back there. And then we've got a big tub there. We've got a tub here that's absolutely loaded. Another tub, another tub, another tub, more tubs at the back there, another tub. Some more boxes there so it's just getting a little bit um chaotic and it's not um i just need to organize it better i think if i know what everything is and i can kind of work through the most priority specimens it's fine obviously this is going to take me a long time to prep through but the key thing is just working out what i've got because it's so easy to forget so i've laid out everything that was in that bucket and it's not actually too extreme so we've got three localities here um, they all need slightly different prep work, um, some need more than others. I mean, these plant ones are pretty much absolutely fine. So I've laid them all out here, so you saw most of the good ones. Um, I still love this little firm one here. If I bring it to the light, I just think they're so cool. It's like a little, like, on all the other faces, nothing. And then you just have that, like, pocket into, into the past. And you've got some lovely stems and lots of leaves. It's just amazing to see such, like preservation I just think it's incredible and then all these nautiluses I can't quite believe just how many pieces I've got um it, it's sometimes just putting them all together helps so I don't think most of these won't need a lot of prep they'll all just need like a little bit of work um and just some TLC I mean this one's pretty much there like even the center isn't too bad um so they just need 
a little bit of work probably with a Dremel and then some Paraloid and they'll all be good. And then these ones, these ones are the tricky ones. But we, we might be able to get something out of them. They're not, considering, you know, how fragile they are, I'm surprised they've lasted. So I'm hoping if I prep them soon, they, they should survive. But um, yeah, so that's box number one. But that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did. I'll also link my other social media down below if you'd like to follow me on there. But um, yeah, thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.